Hello everybody and welcome to my daily summary of the World Championship match between Vichy Anand, the challenger, Magnus Carlsen, the reigning world champion. Today was game five and before the game started, things were all square in the match, two all, so it was an important day. Vichy Anand with the white pieces, we saw how he beat Magnus Carlsen in their last game when he had white, so he was certainly hoping to pressurise the current champion and let's see what happened in that game it was an interesting game let's have a look well Anand started with d4 and rightly so we've seen him play this already a few times actually in every game so far versus Magnus Carlsen and with reason he he does want to avoid the Berlin when he plays 1e4 so d4 has brought him a certain amount of success uh, of course he won the last game so he's going to stick to his guns knight of 6 c4 and now e6 which we also saw previously, but this time after knight of three, instead of the move pawn to d5, which actually uh, resulted in Magnus having a horrible position out of the opening, very good preparation by Anand, he plays the so-called Queen's Indian defense with b6. Not a total shock for Anand, I'm sure, but uh, a good choice by Magnus just to keep things, uh, well, uh, unclear, mixing things up, making Anand guess, guess what he's going to play in the opening. So b6 and g3, the main line. And here already Magnus plays a side line, bishop b4 check. At top level, what you mostly see nowadays is the move bishop a6 to attack this pawn, maybe displace the queen after queen c2. There's a lot of theory in this line. Or the old, old main line, simply bishop b7, developing the bishop along the diagonal like so. Uh, but bishop b4 check has been played. And after bishop d2, the point is that now black retreats with the bishop to e7 and you're all asking well why didn't he play bishop e7 straight away in this position then and the point is that in in this particular position the bishop is actually better placed on c1 than on c2 oh, on d2 because here the ideas with pawn to d5 are in the air whereas in this particular position the bishop actually blocks the influence of the queen uh, and of course to move d5 in certain positions is not as favorable or possible. So a nice little idea there for you guys to uh, keep in mind at home. So bishop b7, knight c3, and now bishop b7, now developing the bishop, bishop g2 of course, and here the move c6, curious move, uh, looks a bit weird at first because you block your own bishop in, but it has a very clear intention of establishing a pawn on d5, and also again stopping uh, white from playing d5 himself. Vichy plays the absolutely critical move, pawn to e4, with the idea of going e5 himself, and this basically forces black's hand, forces Magnus to play d5. And here, again, Vichy played very quickly. There are a few ideas here. Maybe the move queen e2 is very interesting, just keeping this bishop locked in for the moment, but he played e takes d5, which has to be the critical try. And now after c takes d5, he brought his knight into the center. This knight leap is seen a lot in these variations, and it means that this pawn takes pawn idea is now impossible thanks to the pin along here. So knight e5 castles castles. This has all been seen before. And now knight c6. And here uh, there are a few ways white has played. He's played the move bishop f4, for example. Uh, he's played the move uh, even... Uh, C takes D5, which is what played in the game. There are a few ideas here. But C takes D5 was Anand's choice. Now, when I first looked at this, when I was doing the live commentary, I'm doing it for the Spanish channel here at Chess24, I thought, oh, what's the point? Because after knight takes knight, pawn takes knight, knight takes D5, surely black is totally okay and white hasn't posed any problems at all. But the point of this C takes D5 was soon revealed because now after knight takes E5, White can play the move pawn to d6, an intermediate move, a fantastic move. So for the moment, white is a piece down, but he wins it back by force because both bishops are attacked. And actually in this position, black is pretty much forced to play what Magnus Carlsen did in the game, which is the move knight c6. Because if he takes the bishop off here, now after pawn takes bishop attacking the queen, and now pawn takes knight, actually what happens is this forced variation leads to a material advantage for white and a serious 
uh, positional advantage. Two pieces here versus a rook in this particular position, despite being a pawn down, is a big advantage. They work much better together. So instead, Carlsen played knight c6, white was obliged to take on e7, queen takes e7, now another very good move by Anand, the move bishop to g5. This is a typical idea, and what white would love to do is to be able to play the move pawn to d5 next. If he can get in d5 successfully, black can find himself in a huge amount of trouble. So black has to react. Now, Carlson reacted with the move h6, which uh, looks like it might be the best move. The point is that if you were to move a rook to the center, for example, with the move rook fd8, I'm wondering whether a move like queen f3 is possible, but even d5 straight away. And after h6, maybe, just maybe, you can take on f6 and now uh, sacrifice the queen for two pieces. d takes e6. Rook takes rook, rook takes rook, and bishop a6. And if we take stock in this position, this, you have a, a rook and a knight for the queen, but you also have this extremely strong c6 pawn, which uh, ironically we saw uh, in the third game how much trouble it caused Carlsen. Well, it's not going to take long to get down to the seventh. The rook is also swinging in. And white has just got fantastic play in this position. So that was a really interesting option were black to play rook fd8. But Carlsen, being the uh, pragmatist he is, played h6. And after d5 now, things are a bit different. Note that you can take on f6, but after queen takes, it's slightly less potent. Because now after d5, you can play rook a d8. And uh, unfortunately, the difference here is that uh, uh, a lot of the time, for example, takes, takes, takes. I think here you can play bishop a6 hitting the rook. And I'm not sure that this particular variant is as accurate or as promising as the one we saw before, although it is quite similar. So instead, after h6, Vichy played the very interesting and good, I should say, d5. You cannot take on d5, that's quite obvious. e takes d5 runs into knight takes d5 and knight takes f6 is coming and that's just game over. h takes g5 runs into d6 c6 and actually white is equal in material but has this monster pawn. And after rook a d8, again, interesting ideas with d takes c6, uh, rook takes d1, Rook f takes d1, h takes g5, c takes b7. Again, very, very unclear on all of these queen sack positions, but interesting nonetheless. Carlsen avoided all of that, though. Clearly, he looked at this at home, as had Vichy, although in the press conference, Vichy said that he looked at it some while ago, so clearly he wasn't expecting this today. So he played the move knight to a5, which is a good move. Uh, but white gets a lasting advantage anyway. Carlsen whipped off this knight on f6. The problem with d6 now is that after queen d8 and bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, any position like this, the big question is, can white actually hold on to this pawn? If he loses it, he's just going to be pawned down. And the more we looked at this, the more we thought, you know what, this probably isn't sufficient for white. So he took on f6, after which Magnus had to take with the queen. And once again, d takes e6 was a good move by... Vichy. Queen e2 is also very interesting here, just maintaining some tension, but I, I don't mind d takes e6 at all. And in this position, um, once again, we reach an important moment. Magnus played the uh, normal queen takes e6, but it was possible after d takes e6 to take on g2 with the bishop. And the point is that, well, king takes g2, queen takes e6 is clearly a superior version to the game, as we'll see. But white can win a pawn with the intermediate move e takes f7 check, after which queen takes f7, king takes g2, knight c4. Well, it's an unclear position because the queen is coming to b7, the knight is coming to e5. There are all kinds of tricks with knight coming to f3, and it's it can be sometimes a bit unclear. So I think uh, bishop takes g2 was a real interesting alternative, but maybe Anand had already worked out a way to uh, neutralize some of this black initiative. So instead he took on e6, after which we then saw 
Rook to e1, hitting the queen. The queen came back to f6. And now a very, very strong move indeed. Knight to d5. I think this is probably the strongest move of the whole uh, line because suddenly black is in a bit of a dilemma. How does he deal with this pressure? He's got two options. He either takes on d5 with the bishop, as Carlsen did, or he plays the move queen takes b2. This is really the critical variation of the whole game. And after queen takes b2, the point is that now this queen, it feels a bit lacking in squares on b2, especially after the move rook e2. Where does it go? Well, it can only go to a3. Uh, a3. If you go queen b5, knight c7 actually wins material. So you have to go to a3. And even here, you hit the queen again with rook e3. If queen c5, I hit the queen with rook c1. And knight c4 doesn't help matters because now I can take take and play knight e7 check. This is a key theme in all of these variations relating to queen takes b2. I can win two pieces for a rook. And here, after bishop d5, we were analyzing during the broadcast that this is very unpleasant for black because my queen comes to h5. You have a real problem with the f7 weakness and the position starts to get really, really unpleasant. So instead of queen c5, you can try something like queen d6, but of course that runs into another trap, knight e7 check, winning the queen. So you can't even do that. So most probably you have to go back to b2. But now after rook b1, again, queen takes a2, only move rook a1. And wherever the queen goes, let's say queen b2, I can take, take rook b3 and then take on b7 with, again, the similar kind of advantage that we saw before. Or if queen c4, once more we see this idea. Rook takes knight, pawn takes rook, knight e7 check, with uh, certainly some initiative for white. So I actually very much understand Magnus Carlsen's decision in the game to take this knight off on d5 with bishop takes d5. But now, after bishop takes d5, white has got a nagging minor piece advantage. Uh, these are the kind of advantages that uh, the likes of Carlsen, the likes of Karpov, and so on and so forth, have been able to really uh, show how to uh, build up the pressure, build your advantage slowly but surely. In this particular position, it is absolutely clear visually that this bishop is stronger than this knight, which is lacking squares and on the rim, whereas this bishop is, of course, a monster on d5. The only problem with the bishop is that it's kind of lacking support, especially after rook ad8, because there's quite an aggravating pin there. But even after rook ad8, queen f3, again, we reach another critical moment in the game where I truly thought that Carlsen was going to play queen takes queen here. Um, and after bishop takes queen, yes, of course, he is worse, and there is a nagging advantage for black, uh, rather for white, but I thought there might be a way to neutralize this to somehow. For example, knight c4, b3. But even during the broadcast, we were seeing how tricky this position is for black to hold. The knight still doesn't have a good home. If it comes to d2, bishop g2, and it's really locked in in a weird spot on d2. Not saying it's losing, but could be unpleasant. If it comes to b2, the rook comes to the seventh, and uh, after a5, rook to c1. Again, this knight is really lacking squares, whereas white is looking to dominate on the seventh rank. And, you know, a move like knight d6, rook e7 once more, knight b5. It's just a very, very unpleasant long-term advantage for black to have to try and suffer. And um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me at all if Vichy were to win a position like this. So really critical moment. But in the end, Black went for the move queen takes b2. Now, I was actually highly critical of this move in the, uh, in the broadcast because I thought that it gave white so many chances after the accurate rook ad1. Should be said that up to this point, Vichy has just played perfect chess. He really has. Uh, rook ad1. And now we've reached an interesting moment where I thought actually white is just going to be very close to winning here. Uh, Vichy played, or rather Magnus played the move queen to f6, which is... Uh, in hindsight, a good try for equality, but actually, um, you know, it was, uh, I think Vichy missed some chances in that line. But let's have a look at the alternatives. Well, here, white is actually just threatening bishop takes f7 check, thanks to the pin. So if you go rook d7, that actually runs into queen f5. That's a very strong move. 
And the point is that the rook now feels a bit airy. Rook f d8 runs into bishop takes f7, check winning. So you have to move the rook to c7. But even here, bishop e4 is extremely strong threatening mate. You have to go g6. And now queen f4. And at the absolute minimum, white is winning back a pawn. But it may be the case that he just gets loads of initiative anyway. And it's clear that in this position, white is the one with a huge advantage. Uh, instead of this, if you go rook d6, again, that loses. Because after bishop takes f7, check. And Anand uh, pointed this out in the press conference. Rook takes f7, rook e8, check. King h7, you can actually just go queen takes f7. Looks like you've blundered a piece after rook takes d1. But actually, there's no way to save yourself as black here after king g2. The king is just too weak. You're going queen g8, check next. and um, Or queen f5, check, followed by queen back. And it's just winning. So there's absolutely nothing black can do in this position. For example, rook d6, queen f5, and if g6, just rook e7. And uh, it's going to be mate in the next couple of moves. So as a result, black decided to play queen f6. But I said during the broadcast, after the exchange and rook down to the seventh, I really didn't expect Carlsen to survive this. White's initiative is so strong, his position is so good that even, even uh, somebody of Magnus's caliber, somebody who's defended so many worse positions, I really wasn't feeling it for him. Let's see actually what happened though, because after this, I think this is the moment where Vichy started to go a bit wrong. King g7 was played, that's a good move, and even here, Rook takes e7. Vichy himself said in the, the press conference that he, this probably wasn't the best move. And he had seen that the move king g2, for example, was a fantastic idea with the idea of now threatening bishop takes f7 check. For example, if f5, or let's say a6, now you can play the move bishop takes f7. And after rook takes d1, bishop h5 is checked. And the king is off the back rank, so you can now recapture with a pleasant advantage, although a lot more work is to be done. So king g2, this prophylactic move, just getting off the back rank was a great idea. Even the move uh, rook c7 here is very, very interesting. And after rook d6, once more, you can play bishop f3. And after the exchange of rooks, you're going to collect on a7 and pressurize on, uh, on f7 via bishop h5. And white has got a lasting initiative. But he played the move rook takes c7 which is a, 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 a dubious idea because now black is able to take advantage of the fact that white is pinned with knight c6. And after knight c6, again, we see a very uh, poor choice by Vichy. He should have played the move rook a4 to um, not only threaten rook g4 check, but just to stop this idea of knight b4, which we see in the game. And here, for example, after rook d6, uh, you know, white can play a few things. He can play the move bishop f3, but he's even got the move rook c1. And yes, rook takes d5, rook takes c6 is going to be tough for white to win in these double rook endings. But I tell you what, with these weak pawns, with the fact that after, I don't know, b5, you can uh, check, and if rook g5, rook f4, you know, with the two rooks on the board, not just the one rook, I think things are slightly more tricky for black. But even still, after bishop f3, they were saying how after takes, takes, rook d8, bishop b3, knight d4, it's not much for white. And that very well may be the case. So I think the double rook ending may have been a chance. And I think it's an explanation really as to why Vichy played rook b7. But after this, knight b4 is a clean equalizer because now there's no way to, so, uh, to hold everything. And actually, after uh, the exchange of rooks, knight takes a2, knight c3, Three versus three on the king's side. Yes, the only problem black has is his knight. But as soon as he gets that back into play, which he did after bishop f3, f5, the draw was almost a certain result. And um, not much more commentary to be given. A few moves came into a rook ending. And uh, after rook f5, they agreed to draw. Rook takes e3 is a stone cold draw. So a few missed opportunities for me in that game for Vichy. King g2 or rook c7, as we saw before, I think would have given him a real chance for uh, at least pressurizing. Is far from winning, but great chances to just keep the pressure on Magnus. Instead, it was Magnus who came away with the draw. He'll be the happier of the two. And now, tomorrow, he has white. And in fact, the two 
following games he has white tomorrow and then after the rest day. So it's his turn to put on the pressure with the white pieces. A win for him tomorrow will obviously be, be a massive boost for him in the match, means that he'll go one up. But for the moment, all things are tied, two and a half, two and a half. Hope you've enjoyed this video summary and remember to tune in to Chess24 tomorrow at one o'clock Central European time for game six of the 2014 World Championship match. Carlson Anand, take care.